What's going on, everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show, and welcome to where we usually do the Bobo at. Except, we've made a lot of changes in the Bobo room, and actually have done a lot to make the background a lot more interesting. We're going to use this Bobo setup for this video, and we're going to be doing something totally different today, and it's something that I hope you guys are going to enjoy. We're going to take a trip down memory lane. And what I'm going to do, we're going to use Google Earth right here, and I'm going to take you guys to each of the prisons that I've been at and share with you guys some of the craziest things that I remember about serving time at these prisons. Now, we're not going to do them all in one video. We're going to do one video per place that I serve time at, maybe even the jails as well. And we're going to start today with a place called Halifax. Now, Halifax is a place that I served 10 months at before getting in some trouble, going to the hole, and ending up going to a level two. Halifax was a level one prison, and it was the first prison that I went to after the receiving unit, a place called Mecklenburg, which we're getting ready to type in Mecklenburg right now and see what pops up. There's going to be nothing. There it is right there. Old 960 Prison Road, Boyton, Virginia. Folks, this is where Mecklenburg Prison used to be at, but now it's nothing. It is a damn, God, it looks crazy seeing this. There is nothing here, folks. This used to be a major prison complex. You can still kind of see, you know, the service road where the perimeter truck used to go around and Mecklenburg is located off of Prison Road, and Prison Road is this long, long road that comes off of this main road, and I believe this is 460. This was the very first prison that I ever went to, both of the times that I went to prison. The first time I went for 18 months, the second time I had a seven-year prison sentence, and both times for receiving, I was coming down 460, right down this road from the jail, and turning right here. There's a street sign right here at this intersection that says Prison Road. You know you're at prison when you're turning down a road called Prison Road. Taking this long, long ride all the way down here to what used to be a major prison complex. And now there's nothing here. I don't know why they tore this place down. I would have figured by now they would put a housing development back here or something but there's nothing left of this place. We're not going to spend a lot of time here because obviously there's no reason to. Maybe we can revisit this idea in the future. But I want to go now to Halifax, a place located at 1200 Farm Road in South Boston, Virginia. And I want to zoom all the way out just to show you how far away, hopefully I'm going to be able to show you how far away Halifax was, wow, that's pretty far. We're all the way in space now. How far away, maybe we should come in a little. Uh, we're going in the ocean. Let's see how far away Halifax was. And now we, all right, there it is. 1200 Farm Road. Well, it damn sure doesn't look that far from space. Folks, welcome to Halifax. The second level one prison that I would end up serving time at. Now, during the first prison stint that I had, the 18 months, I would leave from Mecklenburg and go to another level one. We'll explore that level one in another video. But I want to focus today on the second level one that I ever went to, spending 10 months at this facility, a place known as Halifax. I believe Camp 23 is what it's also referred to as. And there is a lot of crazy stuff to share with you guys about what it was like to serve time at this place. Again, Another long road leading to where this prison is. Notice on Google Earth, it says Department of Corrections right there. 1200 Farm Road is actually in a farm. It's actually in the middle of a field off of what looks like an old service road. And you know, when I see this place, like looking at this, we can spin around. Let's get the 3D view going. When I see this place, I haven't seen this place since 2011. I got locked up in the end of 2008. I believe it was December 21st, 2008. And I left from the jail in 2010. So I think I stayed here from 2010 till 2011. Somewhere around that time, I was here for 10 months. And man, you want to talk about a prison that is in 
Kind of the middle of nowhere. Now, from here, it probably doesn't even appear like that, but look at all of this. Look at all of this nothingness. There's a neighborhood right here, but you can't see this from this prison. This is way down the holler. And we're going to speak about what I like to refer to as the holler, this area right here, in just a little bit. But when you get to this place, let's see if we can turn around and get to the front entrance. All right, don't get dizzy on me. All right, let's zoom in right here. So when that prison van is coming down this road and you go around this uh, cul-de-sac right here and you pull up right where this delivery truck is, smack at the front door of Halifax Camp 23, one of the first things that you realize is, man, you are in the middle of nowhere. You're in an area that you don't know nothing about. Well, if you're anybody like me, you don't know nothing about South Boston. I never even heard of this place. I wanted to try to do a street view of this, putting our little man down here. But when I try to do so, it doesn't work. I did find that I can put the little man right here. This is the last known place that a Google vehicle traveled. They must have turned around when they saw they were at the prison. So let's go ahead and get a street view from right here, looking right at the front of Halifax. Folks, that is the door that you walk into when you get here, climbing up these stairs, going right into the receiving area of this prison. Now, this is also the main building right here as well. There's two wings where prisoners are housed, and I think this prisoner holds something like, I don't know, maybe 250 prisoners, somewhere around that. It's a couple hundred prisoners. It's not very many. And you've got a wing here and a wing here. And in the main building, you've got prisoners in each of those wings. And there's going to be a guard who's positioned on this side and on this side. Who, you know, keep an eye on what's going on in those wings. I wasn't in the main building. And thank God that I wasn't. We'll talk about that a little further uh, after we get out of this street view. But I want to show you something else that's pretty interesting. When you look right, cheer. Folks, this is the warden's house. The warden lives smack dab on the prison property. It's almost like a damn movie. And that's where he lives at right there. Look at his little front porch swing. Got a nice little house. I'm quite sure the prisoners at this place cut his grass and maintain his property. Why wouldn't they? All right, let's get off of this and let's get back to how do we get off of that? Oh, there we go. Click the man again. All right, so let's go over here a little bit more. Here's the top view of the main building. And again, guard here, guard here. They're watching what's going on, you know, in these housing units. Well, I never, you know, later on, I would get a chance to go to the main building. And you would go to the main building for certain things. Commissary, uh, medical, going to the hole. The hole was in the main building. As a matter of fact, here's the chow hall right here. Uh, you can see the walkway that leads right into the chow hall. The chow hall is like right in this area. There's a kitchen. Well, the hole is right back here somewhere. They've got like two or three cells back here where if you get in trouble, that's where you're going to end up. Old Joe would end up getting in some trouble, and I most certainly found myself in this hole. But with the guards positioned on each side of the main building, you know, for each of those wings, they were right next to where the toilets were at. And that was something that I hated. Anytime that I went to a facility, jail, prison, anywhere, you know, it always took me a little while to get comfortable using the bathroom, whether we're talking about a number one or whether we're talking about having a dookie. I got stage fright. And where these guards were positioned at was right by the toilets. There was no way in hell I would ever be able to use the bathroom. I'd have to tell the guards, yo, can you look the other way, please? I need some privacy. Privacy just wasn't something you were going to be getting up in this main building. So you might wonder where I was at. Well, this is another housing unit over here. There's two housing units. This is called the Annex, folks. You got a north side and a south side. Here's the north side. Here's the south side. And old Joe. Oh, I can go down a little bit. Damn, I didn't know I could do that. Let's turn this. Old Joe was right here. I was in the north side. Now, this right here. And also, you've got a wing here, a wing here, and a wing here. And then right in this area is a guard's booth. And then you've got a shower in each of the wings in the annex. And what was great about this prison 
was they had single man showers. Now, don't get me wrong. There would be a time or two when you would see two guys up in the shower. You just look the other way. But they had single man showers and curtains. Curtains. Interestingly enough, from where the guards booth was positioned, which was right here in the center of each of these wings, the guards booth could see over the shower curtain into each of the showers. But at least you had a little bit of privacy. You had little toilet stalls, uh, I think two toilets per wing, and then you had some urinals as well. And again, it took me a little while to be able to get used to using the bathroom here. Now, I can't remember exactly where my bunk was at, but I want to say that I was somewhere like right here. You got bunks that line this wall and line this wall right here. And the, another good thing about this prison, every cut area... You know, your little living space between bunks had a window. Folks, you could open your window at this prison, and you had to because they didn't have no AC or no heat. In the summertime, it was sweltering, and in the wintertime, you were getting frostbite. They had fans on the walls, and those fans, like little office fans that oscillated. Isn't that the word, like meaning they spin? Those fans were actually like the greatest hiding spots For any type of contraband. Tobacco, the devil's lettuce, tattooing supplies. Folks, everybody was hiding their contraband inside of those fans. And if you think, Joe, that's Takashi 6 9 what you're doing right there, you snitching. Well, I'm not. Because any time that they would do a shakedown, all of the prisoners would be walked out to like right in this little field area or right here behind the buildings. And you'd be able to see through the window the guards tearing everything up. The first thing that they always went for were the fans. They knew prisoners were hiding stuff up inside of those fans. But you had a window. You could look out into the world to nothing. Down the hauler, past some fields where prisoners are picking watermelon and cabbage and lettuce and cantaloupe, heavy fruits all day long in the summertime. These prisons grew everything. They damn near supplied all of the food that they needed to feed the entire prison population for all of the prisons. Not one prison in particular grew all of the food, but all of the prisons together, you know, supplied enough food to be able to feed prison populations throughout the state. So, yeah, you could look out the window. Now, I want to show you this as well. This is pretty crazy. Here's the perimeter. And the perimeter here goes forever. So when that truck, and here's the truck right here, when that perimeter vehicle is doing its rounds, folks, it goes a long, long ways, way down here past the greenhouses, past the Enterprise building. This is the prison factory, the best job that you could get at this prison if you wanted a job, making 85 cents and up an hour. And what they manufactured here was clothes, even guards uniforms but again here's that perimeter truck taking this long ride all the way around this compound now if you mapped it out you would know that it took this truck quite a long time to get around and the reason i'm sharing this with you is because when i was here i got to this prison from mecklenburg a place that no longer exists I still had five years left to serve. And even though that's a meatball little pound puppy, I'm going to be honest with you. This is the first time that I was ever doing real time. My first trip to prison, I only did 18 months. So getting to this level one, which honestly they should say level one equals one fence. Because that's all there was that was separating me from freedom. And having that five-year sentence when I arrived at this facility, even though this was borderline a sweet place to serve time at. I'd be lying to you if I told you that I never thought about escaping. Even going so far as putting together a plan. Folks, look at this. Here's where I was housed at in this annex on the north side. When it was chow time, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, we came out through this entryway, down this sidewalk, down this boulevard, past this fence right here. There would be There's a guard's tower right there. You know, the guard would be there opening the fence, sometimes searching prisoners. And then you walked across here over to the chow hall. And then on the walk back in the morning times, especially in the summertime, two beautiful mornings, you're walking back. We got to rotate this so you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. I'm walking back past this first gate right here. And then this long walk where all I'm looking at 
and you can't see it because this is starting to glitch a little bit, is this one single fence right here. One fence, one guard tower right there. No guard ever in that guard tower. And what I'm really looking at is this holla. Past these fields with that watermelon and that cabbage and that lettuce and those heavy fruits. And even though this doesn't look very far, folks, I need to assure you that this is a hike. If I were to ever get over that fence right there, boom, jump the fence, and then get to running <laughs> through this field right here. Folks, this is a long run just to right here. Down this holler. Every single day I thought about this. Past these trees right here. Past this creek right here. You're going to have to take this service road bridge to get past this. The cut through here is going to take too much time. And then to what I used to consider freedom. Folks, train tracks. Every morning there would be a train right here. Going by coming, maybe even stopped a train. And I used to think about this all the time. Man, all I got to do is hop this fence right here past this guard tower where there's never a guard. There ain't no cameras around here. There's one street light right there down through the holler running. <laughs> past Popular Creek to the train and be gone. I had five years and I was thinking about this. Now, if I did this and I got caught, that would be another five years. Folks, if I ever did this and I did get caught, because it's a guarantee that that's probably what would have happened, I wouldn't be here. I'd, I might be getting out of prison right about now. I might be right now getting ready to start after prison show. Pretty crazy to think about. But I used to see that train all the time, every morning. And I used to think about what it would be like to hop that damn fence. But enough about escape talk, because that's something that I never did while here. Let's talk about some other interesting features here at Halifax. Single showers, single stalls to use the restroom. Down in the annex, uh, again, north side, south side, you've got this building right here that separates the two. And right here in the center is a door. That's all that separates you from the north side and the south side. Well, what this area is right here on either side is the inside rec room pool table, uh, a rec box. I was the rec man. That was my job here. I did not want to work. I didn't want to go out on a road crew or work in the fields. These dudes came back looking like they were in that movie Life, like Martin Lawrence, getting dragged out there every single day. I ain't want that. I had me a measly 23 cents an hour rec man job. My responsibilities, because we didn't get rec every single day. This prison didn't have a, a large staff population. And most of the staff went out all day long with the road crews or the farm crews or the park crews or the enterprise. So if you didn't go outside the gate to work, you were sitting in the housing unit, bored as hell, smoking roll-ups. This place was flooded with tobacco, doing tattoos or playing board games or maybe even pool. That was it. One of the craziest things that I saw at this prison, I want to go ahead and jump around a little bit. Way over here, this is the visitation room. I only got one visit while I was at this prison. Here's the visitation parking. Your visitors come in through here and they come in to the visiting room. I got one visit while I was here. And like I had mentioned, this prison was flooded with tobacco. But eventually the warden started cutting down and cracking down on that. Tobacco at this point was contraband. It was 2011. They cut smoking out of prisons here in this state in 2009. I had just left prison in 2008. On that 18-month sentence, and that was the last time that I was locked up when they were smoking legally, cigarettes at least, in prison. So I didn't have a lot of experience in this visitation room, and to be honest with you, I don't remember a whole hell of a lot about my particular visit. But I do want to tell you a crazy thing that happened with somebody else's visit. It was during the time when the warden was cracking down on, on the tobacco, and I'll never forget this. It was on like a Saturday or a Sunday. You know, I'm sitting here looking out my window looking at the train tracks way down the holler, when all of a sudden somebody is like, yo, come here, come here, you got to see this. So we went to another window, maybe over here or something, and it was in the fence right here. And there's barbed wire on top of this fence. And tangled up in that barbed wire were bags, like store-bought packaged bags of loose tobacco. And I think these bags were like a pound each. Okay, and it was all tangled up in the barbed wire. And it's a weekend. 
In a weekend, we were more guaranteed to get wrecked, so everybody's hounding the guard. Hey, can we get wrecked? Can we get wrecked? Hey, let us out, let us out. All the prisoners wanted to hurry up and go get that tobacco. Nobody knew who dropped it off. Somebody did. Somebody's loved one risked their freedom driving from this visitation parking lot way over here all the way around to the back of the prison on the prison road, the prison perimeter truck road, just to throw this tobacco over the fence. And some of it made it, but a lot of it got tangled up in the barbed wire. You can't see it too well right there, but that happened. It was so dry and prisoners were nicking so bad that they risked the freedom of their loved one to throw the pack over the fence, and it did not make it. And needless to say, the guards ended up getting all of that. So that was a worthless, a worthless venture right there. Let's go ahead and spin around, and forgive me, I'm not trying to make you guys dizzy. On the occasion that we did get wrecked, and we probably got wrecked a couple of times per week. A wreck was an awesome thing to get. So when you went to wreck, you know, you came out of the building. Here's our annex. We came out of here. We went through this fence here. And instead of going this way to where the chow hall is, because that was the walk that we made going to chow, we walked down this field, right? Down this field. And somewhere over in this area, there was another gate opening that opened up onto the wreck yard. It could have been here. I can't honestly remember. But, folks, look at the wreck yard to this place. This thing was massive. This is the wreck yard. You've got a guard's tower right here, and maybe maybe this was the opening. It looks like it might be right here. You've got a massive wreck yard for a place that doesn't even really get that much wreck. A baseball field. You've got these little buildings right, and they're like picnic tables right here. And then you've got, uh, you know, the stadium seating for the damn, you know, the softball. At these little picnic tables, you used to have little gang members hanging out. This was only a prison that housed maybe at the most 300 prisoners. And so it was just crazy to see like two or three blood dudes, two or three crip dudes. There wasn't a whole lot of action taking place on this thing. And most of the time, what they were doing at these picnic tables was rapping. Hey, yo, sitting here like an OG at a level one. Dude's trying to test me. I throw them hands like a gun. Bung, bung. I just made that up. That was pretty good, right? As a rec man, my responsibilities were to referee and umpire softball games. I didn't even really know the rules of softball. Also, basketball games. Yo, try to be a white dude with a whistle if you want to. When it was a basketball game taking place, I used to hide from rec. And the rec man would come looking for me. Go railroad. Why ain't you outside? I'm not trying to get beat up at a level one prison over a basketball game. These dudes take this shit serious. And what's crazy is, look at this. Folks, there's prisoners out here on this basketball court. Yeah, prisoners walking the track. Now, the track to this place was huge. It was massive. All right, you're, you're, this is probably a mile-long track at least. And you can't tell it from this picture, but right here there's a huge hill that goes up, and then there's a hill that goes down right here. So you're like running uphill and running downhill. You had to, be, you had to have some wind to be able to jog this track. And there were dudes that would jog this thing from wreck, from the beginning of wreck till the end of wreck. And then over here is where you could really find Joe at. This is Cracker Beach. Here's the volleyball court. Can we get a can we get a rotation on that, Steve? Yeah, give me a little rotation. There we go. Oh, Cracker Beach. Nobody is down there. Yeah, you can see prisoners on the track, but nobody's playing volleyball. I wonder why. I wonder what's going on with that. Ain't nobody playing softball neither. Also, another awesome thing about this prison is this area over here. Now, if you don't know what this is, let me zoom in on this. You're not going to be able to really tell, but folks, this is a weight pit. This level one prison had one of the best weight pit areas ever, and you can tell. Look at all these little dots over here representing prisoners. Everybody used to always be on the weight pit. I tried to get in on the weight pile a couple of times, but if you ain't a like a, a regular religious person who works out, and I don't mean like religious, like... Bible religious, but if you're not working out seriously, they ain't even gonna let you get up out of here, man. Go do some push-ups over there on the on the on the on Cracker Beach. You ain't getting up on there. These dudes take this working out stuff super serious. And again, guard tower here, guard tower here, and guard tower here. And never would there ever be a guard in these towers. What they would do is they would ride around in a van. And let's see if we can see the van. Usually they had the van, and they would just sit in the van and watch the prisoners. And I'm not seeing. I mean, dudes are at wreck, so somebody's got to be watching these these folks. 
Yeah, I'm not seeing the van. The van would just like pull up like right here or it would pull up like over here somewhere and they would just or be parked back here. But yeah, I'm not even seeing the van. So them dudes look like they might be free to go. Again, here's the Enterprise building. Let's zoom out so you guys can really see that. That's the factory where prisoners were making guards' uniforms, prison uniforms, uh, sheets, linens, whites, boxers. Could have got a guard's uniform there. This, this prison was almost like that video game, The Escapist. If you really wanted to get up out of here, this place pretty much offered you what you would need to be able to do so. And I'm not advocating for escape. If you got time, you should do your time. Stay the hell in prison. Don't risk that extra five years. It definitely crossed my mind with five years myself to serve. Another interesting thing about this prison was at nighttime. You know, you got your perimeter truck that would go around. But from where my bunk area was or, or whatever, from my window or maybe another window, you would see the headlights of a vehicle coming around here. And then you would see it like back up and just sit right here, like watching the annex. And I never understood what that was about. Maybe two guards were having a little personal time together. Maybe they were doing something that they definitely shouldn't have been doing by themselves or doing at all. Something illegal. Or, you know, maybe sleeping. I didn't honestly know. Maybe they were waiting for a prisoner who might try their luck. Think you getting up out of here. I'm going to chase you down with this truck. But that was always crazy to see. And I always believed that it was the warden. I didn't know for sure. A prisoner would say, yeah, that's the warden right there. The warden will make his rounds. And why not? His house ain't but right here. He ain't got shit better to do. We in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. Where are you going to run to? There's one final thing that I want to share with you guys about this facility. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as well. If you have, please leave a like and a comment. And I look forward to doing another place that I serve time at and sharing with you guys some crazy things from there as well. Actually, there's a couple of things real quick. Uh, the warden to this facility was like one of these outdoorsmen. He had the tree stands, the deer tracking cameras, and he used to take those and put those at job sites trying to catch people dropping off the pack. When the road crews would come in, you know, they would pull up right here in the truck, and then they would come in here, and sometimes they would get stripped butt ball naked and searched, and sometimes they wouldn't, and sometimes they would pick a few prisoners, and sometimes they wouldn't. So for a long time, it was easy to get the shit in. But then they started cracking down. The warden was out there in his tree stand with his deer tracking cameras, uh, really knocking off the pack. And prisoners were still trying their hands. Folks, there were, I don't know if they were in these fields or not, but where this prison was at all the way out in BFE, there were fields of tobacco. And you know any time that you're around fields of tobacco, you are out in the boonies. Prisoners were bringing in, like, tobacco plants trying to dry that out and cure that in the microwave and smoke that because they were nicking so hard folks i smoked some tobacco straight off the plant one day and it damn near took my head off my shoulders boom i thought i had just hit some crack i don't know what goes into the tobacco from the plant to the cigarette what changes but that stuff is so strong and disgusting as well right off the plant but the final thing that i want to share with you guys about this facility was when I got in trouble and I got shipped off of here. I was doing a hell of a lot of tattooing here, smoking a hell of a lot of roll-ups. I mean, I was living my best life in prison at this place. It took me like almost the entire time I was there to save up to be able to get a TV, but I got my first TV in prison, which would transfer with me to the next place that I went after I got in trouble and shipped off of here. Uh, this prison was never, ever fully occupied. There were always empty bunks. And it was a guy who told me this. I've shared this story before, so I'll keep it brief. Uh, this other prisoner told me, he said, Joe, you want to know why there's empty bunks here? Because nobody wants to be here. If you've got time left to serve and I had five years left, he said, you need to get up off of here. Run your level up and go to a level two. Your time will be a lot better. Now, I like to say that I believe this prisoner and that's why I ran my level up, but I didn't necessarily do it on purpose when I did it. I just ran with it because I was hopeful what he said about a level two was true. There were prisoners who were smoking in, you know, the annex. The guard came through to make his rounds. They were smoking in my wing, wherever my wing was at. We'll just say it was right here. I can't honestly remember. So when he came in, he saw me sitting in the cut. He thought it was me. He told me to get up. I told him I wasn't doing nothing. You got the wrong guy. But I wasn't going to tell on who it was. They might have beat me up. I wouldn't have told anyways. So anyways, I was giving this guard a lot of shit. He ended up finding some tattoo stuff stuffed under a locker. I tried to act like I was a lawyer. Well, you can't charge me with that. That's in a common space. You didn't find that on my person or in my possession. Anybody could have put that there. 
He didn't like that answer. He flipped up my bunk, uh, my mattress on my bunk, and he found a bag of pills. They were ibuprofens. Uh, they were prescribed to another prisoner. I bought them from another prisoner. I was getting a lot of migraines throughout all of the time that I served. When he found that bag of pills, he told me straight up, he said, I don't even care about the tattoo stuff no more. Pack your stuff. You're going to the hole. That would be what ended up sending me to a level two. But I packed my stuff up and they escorted me down this boulevard right here into the main building, into the chow hall and back into the dungeon of this prison back here. And this is embarrassing to share with you, but I'm going to share it anyways. While I was back here and I stayed back here for about maybe two weeks before I got shipped. While I was back here, the only thing that I was able to eat was the food that was coming on the tray. And I don't know if you've ever eaten processed food for a long time, but sometimes, oftentimes, the food that they serve you can give you the worst gas ever. Meat rock. Oh, prison meatloaf. Some kind of a brake pad meat substance with some gravy on it. That stuff used to destroy my stomach. And... I'm back here by myself in the hole. There's like one other cell, maybe two cells at the most. Nobody else is back here. And I am blowing it down back there. The gas is horrendous. It's not even loud. It's them quiet joints like straight, emo- like straight napalm. And it's super, super embarrassing, probably super gross as well. But I mean, it happened. And there was a guard that was making rounds and checking on me, and it was a female guard. And she came back there, and every time she came back there, it got worse. And I'm trying to hold it in. I'm trying to suppress it, but I heard that's not good for you to do. And, you know, then she would start talking about it. She was like, God, what is that smell? Is that you? Is that you? Nah, it ain't me. I mean, I'm I'm embarrassed. No, that's not me. I think it's the sewer. There might be a sewer leak back here. It smells like raw sewage. I don't think I'll ever financially recover from that moment while locked up, but it was something that happened. Probably never going to forget that for as long as I live. Folks, I hope you enjoyed our little field trip to this level one prison that really turned me into a man and kind of prepared me for what life was going to be like at a level two, except how could it ever really prepare me for that? time there was totally different and I hope to be able to share with you guys what it was like when I got transferred from here to the level two in an upcoming video if that's something you guys would like to see please hit that like button and leave a comment letting me know also if you're not checking out the Bobo definitely something you ought to be doing twitch.tv backslash after prison show we've really got not only a cool setup to this thing we've got multiple camera angles we talk about a lot of really interesting stuff there as well so if you've never seen that please consider checking that out with everything that we've shared i'll go ahead and wrap this video up saying hey look that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did so please leave a like and a comment and as always until next time enjoy life the free world Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!